What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're covering some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too, as it really, really does help out the channel. Almost ran out of breath there. But thank you so, so much for being here today. For taking the time out of your day to be here absolutely does mean the world to me. I can't tell you how much it means to me for you for interacting and getting involved. I absolutely love it. Don't forget over on Discord, link down in the description below. We have a Christmas competition going on, art-based. You don't have to be good at art. It's just all about that Christmassy feel. We need to make something out of 2020 and get that Christmassy vibe. <laughs> and with that being said, let's just crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. This story is from Makito. Am I the asshole for not giving up my vacation time to a co-worker because her daughter has cancer? My co-worker's seven-year-old daughter has been diagnosed with cancer and I feel awful for the whole family and I'm so sorry. The office just got together to discuss ways we could support our co-worker in a more meaningful way than just kicking a few dollars over or sending cards. Someone suggested that because she was having to take a lot of time out to be with her daughter in the hospital that we pull our vacation time for her so she could take time off as paid time off. That's a real nice thing to do and I have great respect for anyone who, who does choose to go in on that. But I myself want that vacation time to visit my parents who I haven't seen in months. My coworker realized I was the only one who didn't donate. They were tallying up the total time collected to make the announcement for her and realized the numbers didn't add up and confronted me on it, saying everyone had plans, but they weren't as important as this emergency situation was. I don't want to do it, but I feel like an arsehole for not wanting to do it. Am I the arsehole for not donating my vacation time? Now, like you say, it's incredibly tragic someone's daughter has got cancer and you know I wouldn't wish it on on anyone and it's really really bad I'm sorry but your co-workers are the assholes for putting this pressure on you you know it should be totally anonymous and they shouldn't be confronting you about this this isn't down to you this is down to the workplace I'm sure all the bosses are sat in the back not donating their time either I can only assume they're all sat there watching you, watching you all pool your holidays for one person while they sit there and go, yeah, this is great for the business because we got them all full time now while one person is off for the majority. Great. So the company is the major arsehole in the situation for not stepping back and realizing what's going on and saying, look, you just take as much time as you need. The company I work for right now, like over the past couple of years, like my mum passing away, then my aunt, and then all the stuff going on with my dad, and another family member who has had like two types of cancer and the amount of time I've had to take off, my, my work's been stepping back and saying, look, you just take as much time as you need. And I'm so, so thankful for that. And it makes me want to work harder for them to do more for that company. But companies like this, gee whiz, man. Ewathan says, capitalism is the asshole here, not you. It sucks that your company, as in bosses, corporate, business owners, etc., isn't doing more to support your coworker, and that's falling on you and your coworkers to give up some of your compensation to support her. Do what you feel comfortable with. PTO is rare and precious in the US, and while gifting it to someone is a very generous thing to do, it is in no way required, and using it for your own trips is entirely reasonable and fine, not the asshole. Pikachinto says not the arsehole, the company is the arsehole for not just giving her a PTO or sick leave under these circumstances. But that's the nonsensical, inhumane system we live in for now. Asian in India says not the arsehole, you know who's the arsehole, the company that's creating a situation where co-workers have to give up their time off for their colleague. Jaded Slayer says not the arsehole and this is why I deplore office donation pools. Everyone wants to know who donated and how much. I live by the belief if you donate, do so in private. It's no one else's business. If you're donating just to toot your own horn, brag, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. Marvel Girl 88 says, not the arsehole. You want to help your coworker within your means and giving your time up is not. A lot of people need vacations to keep themselves balanced and it's a big ask for someone to give up. And I, I totally believe that too. I mean, you might need that holiday for your own mental health too. Imagine just working a full year without having any time off whatsoever. And although it's possible for some people, obviously, it's not for everyone. And to expect everyone to do that is, you know, <sighs> shitty behavior in my opinion. But what do you guys think of this situation? What would you do if you was in the OP situation? Would you donate that time off even if you didn't want to? Or would you say, no, that is my time? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description. 
for story one. And our next story is from No Gift 28. Am I the asshole for returning all the presents I got and buying my own because I'm tired of receiving what I feel are thoughtless gifts from everyone? I try not to be spoiled, but my whole life I haven't felt thought of in gifts I receive. I never show it and always act thankful to be polite. The gifts I give others are always personalized, even if I haven't been asked for specific items. I listen and always use their hobbies and interests to make sure they're a hit. One of my favorite things was the shot of Euphoria when they opened their present and were speechless. Then it comes time for me to open gifts and it's a generic set of headphones, much worse than the ones I own and colors I hate. A face wash and a candle set I never use with sensitive skin and allergies. A mug with a weird meme on it that has no inside joke between us that won't fit in my cabinet with a matching set already inside. I'm tired of feeling like the coworker you don't know that you picked for office secret Santa. I stopped hoping they finally listened or got me something from a list I specifically gave in case they couldn't be asked to put the thought and effort in. I can't think of a gift I've received that wasn't donated or stuffed in a box in storage, yet every gift I've given are there still on display, used, talked about or complimented when seen. Why don't I deserve that effort? My friends are so great in every other way. My DH loves me endlessly and there's no other area I, I feel we're lacking, so why don't they try and get me something from my interests? Why am I unwrapping a clearance tea set when I'm a coffee drinker? We all sent out lists again weeks back and my DH said he was already done with his shopping and excited to wrap my gifts. I was hopeful this time he got something from my list. While tidying, I found a stash with a candy, a pair of cheap slippers in a pattern I'd never wear, a makeup travel bag with a tacky slogan, slay all day on it. I despise quotes on anything and it's well known and a pair of gloves. I just felt deflated. I felt sunken in on myself. I realized I'd never get the joy of opening the gift and being blown away by its thoughtfulness. I cracked. I told everyone I wasn't doing gifts this year and to return anything they got me because I didn't have the money and wanted it to be fair. It's true, I don't have the money to waste a thousand plus dollars on personalized gifts for everyone just to feel disappointment. I canceled all my orders, returned all the items I got and bought my things off my own list using those funds. I wrapped them and put them under the tree to me from me. DH is hurt, friends are disappointed, family has told me how spoiled, entitled and petulant I'm being. I think they're just mad because they aren't going to get the gifts from me this year that they boast about and post online and get tons of comments about how cool it is. This year I'm getting what I want and going forward this may even be my tradition forever so I finally get things I'd like. But as Christmas gets closer I'm starting to feel guilty and ashamed of what I've done. Am I the arsehole? Edit, few things I should clear up. One, all I said to my family was that I wouldn't be participating in gift exchange this year due to my budget. I didn't mention that's because I don't like their gifts. My own parents are the ones assuming that is why they have the largest track record for being the worst at gifts for me and I've been called out on it. Example being last year, they got me a bunch of tea when I hate tea and love coffee. I left the tea behind and nicely said I wouldn't drink it but my mother would and she should keep it. I was told I'm ungrateful and expect to be catered to. Two, no one knows about the gifts I got for myself, nor will see them except my husband. Due to the pandemic, we won't be seeing family in person this year. Three, while I did return everyone's gifts this year, that does exclude all my husband's. I usually get him quite a few, but I cancelled about half of them. He still gets about five to seven or so, and I made sure I didn't get myself more than I got him to unwrap. DH equals dear husband. Ooh, this is going to be a tough one to judge because... You know, you can, you could just say like, it's not about the receiving, it's about the giving. But when you do put that much effort and thought into everything, it must grind on you a bit. You know, we're all human. It must absolutely get to you a little bit, right? But it does remind me of a little, here we go. Here we go, guys. A little story where my brother, he moved, he moved like quite far away from us, like four or five hours away from us. I know that's nothing for you Americans, but in the UK, it's quite far. <laughs> And when he moved, he st he sometimes still got us some some gifts and things like that. But they were never, <laughs> they were always like sort of cheaper gifts. And it was so funny. This particular year, it was it was hilarious. Well, I found it hilarious anyway, and it became a bit of a joke that um, my dad had to quit smoking that year, which God bless him, which he done instantly. I mean, he he turned around one day and said, "I'm not smoking," and didn't smoke again, and that was it. Such willpower is amazing. But that Christmas. <laughs> My brother sent him down an ashtray, <laughs> like a personalized ashtray. It was sweet. The thought was there. And then also some shoes as well, but it was two left feet. 
<laughs> it was the funniest thing opening up this box. And my dad even got to this point where he put both the shoes on. <laughs> and you said, Dad, they're two left feet. <laughs> And then it came a bit of a, a bit of an inside joke with me and my dad, like, oh, I wonder what we're going to get this year kind of thing. And it was so funny. It was sweet. And don't get me wrong, I'm not, not bashing on my bro because it was a thought that counts and we, we appreciated that. But it was just, it was, it was just sort of like the novelty factor with it all. I wonder what we're going to get. And it was quite exciting. It still brought the excitement out because we, we was excited about these gifts. But anyway, I'm going to say I'm not the arsehole on this story because I can imagine you'd get to that point where you'll snap. But remember, Christmas is just all about the love. Remember that one. <laughs> but our first comment comes from Hydrox51 saying, I'm going to say not the arsehole. I actually know exactly what you mean because I feel pretty much the same way. I really try very hard to select gifts that will please the receiver, but it seems that no one else bothers. Since you've told everyone else that you're not gifting this year, it seems fair. Do get something thoughtful for your hubby and try to explain to him it'd be much easier if he just buys from your list in the future. Fear M says, I'm torn with this judgment here because according to you, literally everyone you know is a bad gift giver, friends, husband, parents, and extended family. And this is literally not possible that these unrelated groups are all doing the same thing. The only commonality that they have is you. So info, what kind of gifts would you like? And OP reply saying, that's why I felt so torn with my own actions. Am I the common denominator? But to be honest, the majority is family. I don't trade gifts with many friends. It's my family and my husband's family that has been the worst. Anything that shows thought of me specifically for my gift, I always get the sense gifts I'm given are random things picked up with. This could be gifted to someone for Christmas in mind, but never aimed towards me. I wouldn't even mind a mug if I had something on it towards an interest of mine. Even a fluffy blanket would be nice for when I'm reading. A bookmark, fancy coffees, nail polish. Everyone knows I'm obsessed with nail art. A nice journal, a plant, artwork by this local artist I love and display everywhere. Books, seashells, crochet stuff, anything merch from any media I enjoy. Baked goods made from scratch would be so loving. I just want to feel like my gift had me in mind. And then OP replied to that own post again saying, edit, this was meant to be a reply to someone. They get them similar things except things apply to who they give them to. Niece loves candles and lotions so she's happy to get them. Uncle has a cabinet full of funny mugs and plates so he's glad to have more for his coffee and collection. Mother-in-law always tends to her garden in her house shoes so she goes through them like crazy so slippers for her are just great. Brother-in-law is the game master of our family so card games and stuff are perfect for him and he never has enough. It makes more sense to give him a gift of Uno than to gift me it and yet that was one of my gifts last year. It's the same thoughtless items except they're thoughtful when given to the right person, you know. It's hard for me to explain the feeling I'm trying to convey. And finally, Dismallet says, I'm going to go with not the arsehole because I know how you feel although many of my friends can't even bother to give gifts to me in return. It just wears on you when you put out such a high level of effort and it doesn't get reciprocated in the least. Did you try honest communication with everyone prior to cancelling Christmas? It may have been hard for them to hear that their gifts are always missing the mark, but you do deserve to get things you can actually use or like. Try giving everyone another chance next year to see if they got the message. Now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? If you was in that situation, if you was the thoughtful one finding gifts for people that's really personalized towards them and then you was getting very generic gifts. How would you feel about that and how would you deal with it? Would you say like Christmas isn't about the giving or would you say, hell no? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story two. And our next story is from Gorgon Zoila. Am I the arsehole for not changing my cat's name for my sister's baby? I swear I'm going crazy with this. I have two cats, Tonks and Dio. Tonks named after the HP character and Dio's name is a little funny, named after DiGiorno Pizza. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Just like Dio and my mum and I thought it was funny. So now my sister has been saying she's gonna start trying for a baby. I'm like, cool, okay, congrats. Not a big fan of kids myself, but good luck to her. Fast forward three months and she's pregnant and starts talking baby names and shit and nice and fun. Well, her boyfriend's friend texted me yesterday saying her boyfriend's family has a tighter Dio and would appreciate if I rename or, and I cannot believe this, rehome my cat. Friend said he could take him. Like, what the fuck? No, you're not taking my cat and no, I'm not renaming him. So that's what I tell the friend. And like two hours later, my sister calls me and just says something like, she can't ever be over at our mine and mum's house with a cat named after her son. 
It's disrespectful. Like, I cannot understand how she's functioning right now mentally. This is so stupid. My mum said something like, well, we can call him DD or D. He's already 11. That's even more the reason for me not to change his name. He's fucking 11. He's had this name for a decade. I know I should care more about a nephew than a cat, but this is like my kid. I don't want him to be confused and scared for the last half of his life. And I know my sister. She'd bring over her son and let him fuck with the cats and call it cute and take pictures, even if I tell her to stop. I don't know, it's just so stupid. I didn't even change the cat's names because I already told my sister mostly all of this, just because my mum are really putting the pressure on me to just chill. Am I the arsehole for not renaming or rehoming my cat because my sister likes his name? What, what a weird story, right? Oh God, but the cat has been around for 11 years. Baby's new. Cat was named that first. End of story, right? That should be it. But where do people get this mentality from that change your cat's name or get it rehomed? My child is called that. <laughs> I suggest giving the, the cat a title like Dio the First or something like that just to really piss her off. But let's have a look straight at the comments to see what they say. Technical Mushroom says not the arsehole. Ask your sister why she's trying to name her baby after her 11 year old cat whenever she brings it up. It's only forever says not the arsehole. I would actually suggest changing his name to Dio the first of his name though. <laughs> Just to be clear to anyone who may ask in the future about the order of priority. John Chapter says... How is the cat named after a son when the cat's literally been in existence for 11 years before a son was ever created? Word of advice, get your cat microchipped and take plenty of pictures ASAP. If your sister's boyfriend has already found a new home for your cat without discussing it with you first, he might just take the next step and disappear Dio entirely. Sneaky Seer says, not the arsehole, the cat was called Dio for 11 years. Your sister can take a chill pill and so can the rest of the family and friends. Holiday Commission 49 says, not the arsehole, cat had the name first. End of story. End of story indeed. How would you deal with that sister if you was in that situation? What would you do? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. Story comes from Phototivity. Am I the arsehole for telling a woman I don't care she has breast cancer? Some background, I work in a very tiny chain retail that sells bras and underwear. We barely have business, maybe two to four customers every hour, so we try to help people as much as possible since we're able to. This story happened like literally 20 minutes ago. Lady walks in, I call her CL for crazy lady for short, and immediately comes up to me as my manager is on break. I need help now, CL says. Absolutely, I say back. What are you looking for? I have breast cancer and I'm starting radiation soon, so I need a comfortable supportive bra to wear that won't irritate me. I walk her over to the bras that I show every woman in the same situation. She hates those. I show her another section. She hates those. I try to ask in what particular she hates about each bra and she doesn't have an answer and insists I show her more. So I continue to point out different bras, offering various reasons why that one would work. Eventually she goes, this is fucking ridiculous. You clearly don't know your shit. Bring your other coworker out because you obviously don't know shit. No wonder you work retail. I immediately started laughing but blurt out, excuse me, in between giggles. She then gets angry and says, oh, so now you're laughing at me because I have breast cancer. Real nice. At this point, my manager comes out and CL proceeds to say how I refused to help that customer and I laughed in her face and that I made fun of her for having breast cancer. CL then makes a difficult decision to tell the manager I should be fired. Oh, so sad. And of course, she wants a discount. My manager, not wanting a scene, goes back to grab a 10% coupon code just to appease the situation. In the meantime, CL looks at me all smug and goes, I really hope you can survive in this world without asking $10 an hour. So here's where I might bin the arsehole. I go, you really think I give a fuck about this job? I work here once a week on the weekend to help my manager while I have a full-time Monday to Friday job. Working here to help ape shits like you who have no respect for the others is the least of my worries. Have breast cancer all you want. You're going to die a stuck up bitch one way or the other if you keep treating people like this. CL instantly starts crying and runs out the store after telling me she's calling corporate. My manager walks out, asks where CL went and I tell her everything. She knows I work to help her out and that I give no shits about the store so she understands. But then she says I was way too harsh on her and we'll have to look into this now. So am I the arsehole? Now reading this story, it did give me seriously like entitled 
parents uh, subreddit vibes right here. <laughs> and I know some folks are going to go, oh yeah, that happened. Which, you know, it might be. But I've read a lot of retail stories and, and spoke to people in retail too. And although it seems totally out there to, to many, to many retail folks, they're going to say, they're going to see this and go, shit, yeah, I've been through similar, a similar situation. And let's face it, no retail employee deserves to be treated in any way, deserves to be swore at or any of that sort of thing. I just, I'm totally against that. But I think this is an everyone sucks here story for the way what you said in the end about you're going to die a stuck up bitch one way or another. Although you don't care about your job, you still just don't treat someone like that way. And you went too far in my opinion there. But... NJ Bella says, everyone sucks here. The customer is not always right. We know this. She was horrible and she'll likely always be horrible. One interaction will not change that, but it sounds like you have self-awareness and you didn't have to stoop to her level. Edit to add, while it feels good in the moment to put people in their place when they deserve it as much as the CL does, it can do more harm than good to the wrong people. The type of person will likely call corporate and when she shares how horrible she was treated because she has cancer, that's what she'll likely say with waterworks, it will blow back on your manager. The CL will likely get a larger discount and feel vindicated. Not bad for her behaviour. Tofu Dadwangan says, Ah, uh, everyone sucks here. I work at a small retail store and we have an employer or two, or all of them, who are working there more or less just to help out. Every day we deal with CL customers, it's unfortunately part of the job. We had one CL last month who was unreasonably happy with the service and got their friends to help her leave 20 negative reviews that are still up after weeks. Our rating tanked from 4.9 to 3.8 overnight. It's terribly, terribly not worth it to treat a disrespectful customer with anything but respect, especially if you're doing it to help the store. If I was the manager, I would ask you to reconsider if you want to continue helping. DJ Incognito says, everyone sucks here. Can't blame you for saying it that in such a frustrating situation, but it was over the top. She was an arsehole first, but response could have been better. Maybe a more patronizing, over-friendly response would have worked better. Now, I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story four. Once again, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you did enjoy the stories and I hope you're enjoying everything so far. Don't forget about that Christmas competition over in Discord. Invitation link is down in the description below. Come get involved. Would love to see you. And don't forget, I will be updating the merch this week. I'm going to be adding some things like mugs and stuff like that. If you're interested, of course, no pressure to do so. It's all down to you. And a huge thank you for being here today, for taking the time out of your day to be here. You know how much I appreciate that. So thank you so, so much. And I hope you have a fantastic day ahead of you. Whatever you're doing. Yes, don't forget to let me know what you're doing. Always let me know because it's gone quiet on that last few days. And I love hearing it where you are, what you're doing. Fantastic. But don't dox yourself though. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Much love, guys. Goodbye.